Hello viewers, welcome to my channel. I am Hashem Ali Khan. Already 17 problems I have completed till the last video on techniques of financial statement analysis. So three techniques are there, comparative statement, common size statement and trend analysis. So far I have completed two topics that is comparative statement and trend analysis. Now in this video I am going to start the new topic, last topic that is common size statement analysis. So if you want the complete perfect knowledge, watch all the videos from beginning till and don't join in between. You will not be able to understand. So first two theory videos I have uploaded starting. Those two theory videos I have explained you in detail regarding what are the techniques of analyzing the financial statements, how to prepare the comparative statement, how to make the common size, how to make the trend analysis. All these things I have explained in the first two videos. So if you have not watched those videos, I suggest you to go to the playlist of my channel. Select the subject cost control and management accounting. Select the video of techniques of financial statement analysis. Be clear about the concept. Have a thorough knowledge on those techniques. Then you can understand this. Now, I am starting the next problem. Problem number 18. But before that, I expect my viewers to have a printout of the problems which I have given in the link under my description. Always keep ready the problem. And take a screenshot of the next three problems that is 18, 19, 20. Then I'll explain all the points regarding this financial statement analysis. Now, see the 18th one. The following data is available from the profit and loss account of Deepak Limited. The data is given regarding the profit and loss account, sales, wages, selling expenses, gross profit. Four items are given for the year 1986, 87, 88, 89. You are required to show the trend percentage of different items. Already three, four problems in the previous videos I have completed. How to calculate the trend percentages? Now first question a bit, you have to calculate the trend percentage for all the four items, sales, wages, selling expense, gross profit. And second question, trend percentage of relationship between wages, selling expense and uh, wages, selling expense and gross profit on sales. So second part later on we will discuss, first of all, first point a, calculation of trend percentage of different items. This is not a different one, already we have done. Deepak Limited calculation of 10% of sales, wages, selling expense and gross profit. Four items are given. So sales, wages, selling expense and gross profit. For calculating 10%, the first year normally will be taken as the base year. So here the first year is 1986. For 1986, all trend values should be 100. All 100. Right? Now we have to calculate the trend values for other years. So what is the formula? Already in the previous video I have explained trend percentage is equal to value in the current year divided by value in the base year into 100. So here in the problem it is given, first of all we will take the sales. 1986 all values I have taken 100, now 1987, 3,27,500 divided by 3,10,000. Base year sales are 3,10,000 and this 3,10,000 should be taken in the denominator. Numerator 3,27,500. So 3,27,500 divided by 3,10,000 into 100, you will get 105.65. Next one, 3,20,000 divided by 3,10,000 into 100, you will get 103.23. Last one, 3,32,500 divided by 3,10,000 into 100, you will get 107.26. Similarly, for wages, one more item I will explain. Uh, wages, the base year wages are 107.500. And the current year 1987, it is again 107,500. So one year we have taken 100, here also we'll take 100 because it is same, value is same. Then third year 115,000. So numerator 115,000, denominator 107,500 into 100, you will get 106.98. Last one, 120,000. So 120,000 divided by 107,500 into 100, you will get 111.63. 
Similarly, we have to calculate for selling expenses and gross profit. So this first part is completed calculation of trend percentages as usual. Secondly, it is asking you to calculate trend percentage of relationship of wages, selling expense and gross profit to sales. That means sales we will take it in denominator and all the respective values will take it in the numerator. So here relationship of wages, selling expense and gross profit to sales. So each item will be related to sales. For example, wages. Wages to sales. Then selling expenses to sales. Gross profit to sales. So we are making a relationship. Percentage of various items on sales. Right? So here first one, wages to sales. Now we will calculate the percentage of wages on sales. So how much are the wages in 1986? It is 107500. How much are the sales? 310,000. So 107,500 should be taken in the numerator and denominator 310,000 sales. That means wages by sales in 200. Wages by sales in 200. So 107,500 divided by 310,000 in 200. You will get 34.68. Now we'll come to 1987. Wages are 107,500. Sales are 327,500. So 107,500 divided by 327,500 in 200, you will get 32.82. Denominator, we will take the sales. Numerator, we will take the wages. We will take the wages. Third year, 115,000 divided by 320,000 in 200, you will get 35.94. Last one, 120,000 wages divided by sales are 332,500 in 200 you will get 36.09. So we have calculated wages to sales. Similarly, we have to calculate selling expenses to sales. Only one item I explain. Selling expenses are 25,750. This should be taken in the numerator. Denominator sales. How much are the sales? 3,10,000. So 25,750 divided by 3,10,000 into 100. You will get 8.31. Second, one more. 29,000 is the selling expenses. Sales are 327,500. So 29,000 divided by 327,500 in 200. You will get 8.85. Like this last one, gross profit to sales. So take the gross profit 90,000 divided by sales 310,000 in 200. You will get 29.03. Second is 95,000 is the GP. 95,000 divided by 327,500 in 200, you will get 29.01. This is called relationship of various items to sales. Denominator will take the sales and numerator will take the respective variables. That's it. Now we have to calculate the percentage trend values of all these values. Of all these relationship, we have to find out the trend percentage. So what we are covering? Trend percentage of relationship of various items to sales. The various items are wages, selling expense and gross profit. So first wages to sales. Second selling expenses to sales. Third gross profit to sales. The first year will be taken as the base year. What is the first year? 1986. So all these values should be taken as 100% trend values. Now, as usual, we calculate the trend percentage. Base year, all values are dead. The other values can be obtained by taking current year value divided by base year value into 100. For example, this 94.64, how do we get, got this one? 32.82 divided by 34.68, base year value. Current year value is 32.82, numerator. Divided by 34.68, into 100 you will get 94.64 next one 35.94 divided by 34.68 base year value in 200 you will get 103.63 similarly 36.09 divided by 34.68 in 200 you will get 104.07 same procedure for this one the current year value is 8.85 base year value is 8.31 8.85 divided by 8.31 in 200, 
you will get 106. Similarly, this take it in numerator, this is denominator into 100, you will get this one. Then 8.35 divided by 8.31 into 100, you will get 100, 100.48. Last one also same. Current tier value 29.01 divided by 29.03 into 100, 99.93. 24.22 divided by 29.03 into 100, you'll get 83.43. That's all. This is the 10 percentage of relationship of various variables to sales. That's it. So this is the end of problem number 18. So totally we have completed the problems on comparative statement and trend analysis. Now the last technique is common size statement. So common size statement is also one of the technique of analyzing the financial statements. So what will, how we'll make the common size first time we are going to see. In common size statement, one item we have to take it as base and express all other items as a percentage on sales. That means sales should be taken as 100%. So if you are making income statement, the biggest item always will be revenue from operations or sales. Both means same. We can call it as revenue from operations or we can call it as sales. And this is the main item in income statement. So this revenue from operation will be taken as 100% and express all other items as a percentage of sales. That's it. So here, common size income statement for the year ended 31st March, particulars. Revenue from operations, other income, the total income. It is given in the problem. I have copied the format which is given in the problem. Same format is given in the problem. So revenue from operation, other income, total income, five. Expenses, cost of material consumed, employee variable expense, other expense, total expenses, B. A is the total revenue, B is the total expenses. A minus B is the net profit. 164. So up to this amounts, it is exactly given in the problem. What I have calculated is percentage. This is not given. Now we have to take sales or revenue from operation as 100%. So this is 100. Now express all these values as a percentage of revenue from operations. So all these values should be taken in numerator and denominator you take 4 lakh. Denominator you take 4 lakh into 100 like 1 lakh divided by 4 lakh into 100 you will get 25 5 lakh divided by 4 lakh into 100 you will get 125 2 lakh 40,000 divided by 4 lakh into 100 60 72,000 divided by 4 lakh into 100 18 24,000 Divided by 4 lakh into 100, 6. 3 lakh 36,000 divided by 4 lakh into 100, 84. 1 lakh 64,000 divided by 4 lakh into 100, 41. That's all. So by seeing this percentage, we can conclude. That means this other income is 25% of revenue from operations. And 60% cost of material is 60% of revenue from operations. A, employee benefit expenses. These are 18% of revenue from operation. Other expenses are 6% of revenue from operation. Finally, profit. Profit is 41% of revenue from operation. That means if revenue from operation is 100, we are going to get 41 as net profit. For every 100 rupees of sales, we are getting 41 per rupees of net profit. That is the meaning. That's all. Now I'm coming to the next problem that is problem number 20. The following figures are extracted from the books of Ravindra Limited for the year ended 31st March 2017. So here sales, purchases, opening stock, closing stock. Then all items are given salaries, rent, postage, advertising, commission, discount, interest paid, loss on sale of asset, profit on sale of investment, provision for taxation you are required to prepare a common size income statement again just like the previous problem we are required to make common size income statement now see here common size income statement for the year ended 31st march 
So here sales are given. Revenue from operations or sales means one and the same. So revenue from operations, sales, 3,15,000 given in the problem. Cost of goods sold. From sales, when we deduct the cost of goods sold, we will get the gross profit. Sales minus cost of goods sold will get the gross profit. Cost of goods sold, how to calculate? Opening stock plus purchases minus closing stock will get cost of goods sold. All the values are given. Opening stock is given. Purchase are given. Closing stock is given. So cost of goods sold B, 1,53,300. We have sales. We have cost of goods sold. Sales minus cost of goods sold will get the gross profit. A minus B. So gross profit we got 1,61,300. From gross profit, we deduct operating expenses. The operating expenses are salaries, rent, postage and stationery, advertising, commission, discount allowed. This you have to remember which are called operating expenses. So these are the operating expenses. Take the values in the first column. The total operating expenses are denoted as D. 29,190. Gross profit minus operating expenses. We will get operating profit. So gross profit is 1,61,300. Operating expense are 29,190. Deduct, we'll get operating profit 1,32,510. To this operating profit, we add non-operating income and we deduct non-operating expenses. So what is non-operating income? Only one item is given profit on sale of investment. Actually investment will not be regularly sold. Sometimes investment are sold. It's a non-operating. It is not relating to operations. So it is non-recurring. So profit on sale of investment is a non-operating income, 3,999. From this, we deduct non-operating expenses. So here, non-operating expense consists of interest paid and loss on sale of asset. These two are called non-operating expenses. Here, G. So E is the operating profit, F is the non-operating income, and G is the non-operating expenses. Now, profit before tax is E plus F minus G. And operating profit plus non-operating income minus non-operating expenses will get profit before tax. So, profit before tax, we got 1,29,579. This is the profit before tax. From this, we deduct the provision for taxation. So, provision for taxation, 21,000 is given. Deduct 21,000, we'll get 1,8,579. 108,579. This is the PAT, profit after tax. That's all. The first column, amount column, we have completed. Now we need to calculate the percentage. So in common size income statement, we'll take the sales as base. We take the sales as base and sales will be taken as 100%. So sales have taken 100%. Now express all these values as a percentage of sales. That means these values should be taken in the numerator and sales 3,15,000 should be taken in the denominator. Then multiply by 100. Example. 29,400 divided by 3,15,000 into 100, you'll get 9.33. Similarly, 1,57,500 divided by 3,15,000 into 100, 50%. Similarly, 1,86,900 divided by 3,15,000 into 100, 59.33. One more item I explained. 33,600 divided by 3,15,000 into 100, 10.67. Like this, you have to calculate all the percentages. That's it. This is called common size income statement. So, students, in this video, I have explained you 18th problem on 10 percentage, 19th and 20th problem on common size income statement. Few more problems are there on common size statements. That will do it in the next video.